There are those who think you shouldn't have any glass at all on a cruising boat. I think differently. Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Listen in as today we explore the five reasons we have glass on Calypso. You're listening to the Boat Galley Podcast. Tips, reviews, and how-tos for your cruising adventure. I'm Nika Waters, and this is Fit to Sail. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Schooner Chandlery, a nautical marketplace for you and your boat. Find traditional supplies for your new or classic boat, as well as nautical art and unique boating items from a wide variety of craftsmen. We also have the legendary free bag for incredible comfort aboard. Are you a nautical maker? Use the coupon code BOATGALLEY before March 2019 and sell your wares commission-free for all of 2019. Schooner Chandlery, traditional supplies for your classic boat. Slow down, slow down. Often, when people talk about what life is like on board, one of the initial questions that people ask is, do you have glass on board? I always answer, yes. When I answer yes, and absolutely there's no question in my mind that I answer yes, there's often a sharp gasp. People can't believe that we actually have glass on board. Aren't you afraid it's going to break? Aren't you worried about dropping things? Aren't you thinking that they're going to shatter and you can't keep them and there will be problems with that? People don't like to have glass bottles of beer on the boat. They're excited about box wine because then they don't have to have glass on the boat. They want to drink out of plastic or eat off of melamine or plastic. I know people who have gone so far as to make sure that they only have plastic eating utensils, even though that's not glass. That's a totally different conversation. But how could we possibly have glass on board? Don't we know that it's going to break and shatter and be impossible to clean up? You can't pick it all up and they're going to be shards and you're going to come across them all day, every day for the rest of your life. People tell me and they share these stories about somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody else who had a glass bottle once and it shattered on the boat and it all got everywhere and they couldn't help themselves and they cut themselves every time they turn around. And yes, I don't mean to say that glass isn't dangerous. Glass is dangerous if you have it on land too. And there are definitely some precautions that we take with the glass that we have on board. We're careful to store it where it's well wedged in. We actually carry stemless wine glasses. The ones with stems, I don't like them because they're tippy, but the ones that are stemless, I can hold on to and wedge in places pretty easily. And before I store them, they're wrapped up in cloth napkins. And yes, that's something else we have on board is cloth napkins. And they're tucked into the cubby that we have carved into the middle of our table. And then when it's rough, we just don't use them. We do have some Tervis tumblers that we use for drinking uh, if we're going to the beach or if we are in rougher weather. But generally, if it's nice out and the anchorage is fairly calm, I much prefer to drink out of glass and out of plastic. We're also really careful when we pull out those glass glasses. And if it feels like it's stuck somewhere, then we go and see what it might be stuck on before we just try to rip it out. So we're mindful, and those are things we don't have to do on land, because generally things don't shift when you put them down. They're going to stay put, and nothing else is going to move against them on land. But I will tell you, other than my personal preference for drinking out of glass, is that glass is absolutely useful to have on board. And I wanted to share with you five reasons that we choose to cruise with glass. And no, I'm not just talking about the fact that our boat is made out of fiberglass. First one is one that you've already heard me say. I think glass is much nicer to drink out of. I like the taste of beer out of bottles rather than out of cans. Wine, somehow it makes it feel a little bit more festive when it's in a real glass. Yes, as noted before, our wine glasses are the stemless kind, but I will tell you that part of cruising on a small boat is that there are some things that are kind of small favors and small things that we like to have. And for me, drinking out of a glass when I can, when it's calm enough to do that, that's one of the things that helps me feel like I'm not just camping on the water. Second reason, if we're talking about tonic or beer 
actually we've had more trouble with the loss of contents in cans than we ever have in glass. A lot of our storage is, at least for things like this, for heavy drinks like this that don't require a whole lot of care, it's in the bilge. And yeah, we have a dry bilge for the most part, but there is an occasional drip of water that finds, finds its way down there. Aluminum corrodes super, super easily. We've got a spot right around our mast where I can carry, I believe it's like two and a half cases of beer or tonic. And it's not really a whole lot of fun when I reach into the bilge to pull out that next supply that's going into the fridge and find that the cans are empty. Especially in the Bahamas, that stuff is super expensive. And so far, we have not cracked or lost a bottle to the bilge. Yes, we're a little bit careful and you have to wipe the top off after you after you pluck the top off of your bottle of beer because it might be a little bit rusty. But we have not yet found, and I'm going to knock on wood as we're saying that, but we have not yet lost a bottle to the bilge. Number three, glass is inert. This means that it absolutely will not react to whatever you store in it. We just did recently did an epoxy chemistry experiment. Uh, we were testing some resin and hardener that we've had, mm, in some cases, we've had them for 15 years or longer. We actually have stored a whole lot of it in mason jars with tight sealing caps. And those versions, they were just fine. Yeah, we had a little bit of rust that we were dealing with with the tops, but the mason jars themselves, they were fine and so were the contents. The stuff we had in the original cans that the epoxy came in, that didn't hold up as well. There you go, glass is inert. Third reason that glass is actually decent to have on board. Number four, glass is actually easier to recycle or dispose of than any plastic. In many countries, glass bottles are so prized and hard to find that people leaving the country sell their empties to a newcomer. Jeremy was telling me about when they were living in North Africa, that it was actually the big, huge deal for the expats. Before they left, they would figure out who they were going to bestow their empties on because you couldn't buy new ones. You just had to reuse what you had. And even in places like Trinidad and other spots where we're more likely to cruise, people would reuse their glass bottles. You would take your empties when you were finished with them and it wasn't just you took them to a recycle center and they paid you the deposit back and then you watched basically as they smashed them all. No, they actually wash them out and fill them up again and reuse them. That doesn't happen with anything with plastic or aluminum for that matter. And any glass jar that you have on board, it can be washed out and used again and again and again and again and again. It's pretty awesome that way. That's the ultimate recycling, isn't it? Reusing it. And the fifth reason that we actually believe in having glass on board is that if you want to can your own meats or veggies or sauces, glass jars are the only way to go. They can be cleaned, sterilized, and heated to safe temperatures because, as noted with number three, glass is inert. There are definitely times on board when we don't use glass, but our feeling on Calypso is that glass is a really good thing to have on board. What about you? Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please be sure to subscribe in your podcast app. Just search for the Boat Galley Podcast, and reviews are always appreciated. Until next time, then. Slow down, slow down.